All right, so at this point, um, we are setting up our system to save into the database. Uh, we have the uh, we have the project where we can do the sign in and all of that, and we're starting to capture uh, what is being input into those fields. So I have here uh, save comic. If I open then a F12, um, so I'm here about to save something. Remember the last, the, as far as we got was if we're writing uh, the name of a comic uh, and um, only the first three fields are required. You can fill in the others at the moment, but they're not required. We click save. And the furthest we got at the moment was that it is determining if this is a one word title or not and it's determining if it's got the list of words that we are ignoring. And it's then recognizing the first three letters of the comic for us to use in the ID eventually. So again, contrasting this, if it was the Superman Adventures number one, uh, then I save that, then it sees there the difference that the first time it saw that it was a one word title the second time, it saw that it was a multi-word title. It saw that we have the word the, which we're going to ignore for alphabet alphabetization reasons. And therefore, it still sees the relevant parts of the name, S-U-P, in both of the versions over here. And uh, what were the other two sort of words or phrases or articles that we're uh, ignoring? A. a and an. So an adventure tale number one. Uh, save that, and the result is it's a multi-word title. It recognizes an, and it did ADV, capital letters, uh, as the first three letters of the relevant title of the comic. That's as far as we got. We're still preparing the data to store it. Because remember, the whole point of this is technically a person can write you know any crazy thing over here, and I doubt that there's a, a comic named that. Um, or with special characters or symbols or all of that, and the 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 and the an and all of that for all, for capitalization, that's important to, to take into account too. So we need to prepare the data before actually saving it. I'm going to close this and get back to our code. Let's get back to index.js. Question. If it's not working there, you can use your simulator, and then we'll figure out what's happening with your tablet in a little bit. So I'm going to open the index.js. Let's see where we're at here. We were working in our function prep comic. So you could either scroll to find it, or remember we have control F to find. And if I kind of know the name of my function, fn prep. Capitalization doesn't matter. So there it jumped me down to line 238. Using find is going to be very useful. Control F, because it'll help find into the project what you're looking for. But I, what, I, what I also like is that it highlights it wherever it exists in the code. So these lines and stuff here have a meaning. The gray is what's screen full of the code I'm looking for. Um, right, this is the screen full that I'm looking at. The blue line is exactly where my cursor currently is at. There's the blue line. In this case, because I searched and I found my string, there's a highlight, and where else it shows up in my code, that piece that I'm searching for, FNPR. It didn't care about uppercase, which you can you can tweak over here, match case. Uh, if I turn that on, it will only find instances of things with the exact capitalization. And I mention this because sometimes, let's say you have something, uh, for whatever reason, it's called My App Capital A, and in other instances you have My App Lowercase A, and you want to find one or the other, well, if you've got capitalization that matters, you can turn on match case. And all of this comes from Control-F to find in your document. 
fn prep. Okay, this is the function we were working with. We were preparing the data. Uh, we are checking the value of those input fields. We're storing them in these variables. And we're dealing with checking the first word of the comic name. In case of the, or a, or an, we, um, remove, the, we remove that article and keep the name of the comic besides that. Um, and then, or else, the comic has none of those. It's simply named Superman, or it doesn't have those three types of articles. This is the last place we ended up with. Uh, we just finished with this switch. So again, when you use an app that exists, they've probably figured out all of the details of our inputs and such. We that are creating it from scratch, we kind of have to figure it out ourselves. And you see that it's a bit of effort. So obviously, if it doesn't quite make sense, um, I'll try to explain it in other ways. But does this kind of make sense so far? Any questions on the code so far? Next line, make sure we're after the curly brace before the end of prep comic. In my case, line 283. Let's create a variable here called TMP comic, temporary comic, curly braces, semicolon. Oh, here's Jason. We're going to start to write Jason data. Opening and closing curly braces just by themselves like that means Jason data. PouchDB expects to have data stored into it in JSON format. So we're going to use the JSON syntax that we worked with with the assessment. Uh, we can write here bundled comic data in JSON format for PouchDB. All of those separate pieces of data, the name of the comic, the year of the comic, etc., are going to be bundled up all together in a JSON bundle in JSON format. I'm going to break apart those curly braces. I guess what you can do here for complete, completion, you can write end temp comic. And the reason to do this is when these curly braces are separated over several lines, it's easy to lose track. What's this curly brace supposed to be about? Well, here my note is that this is where it ends temp comic JSON object, which is redundant because object is already right there. OK, so the way this works is we need a field, so to speak, in quotes, underscore ID colon. So quick note up here for pouch db we must have uh, an id field. Pouch expects everything stored into its database to have the underscore ID field. It doesn't matter if it's first or third or last, but it needs it to be in the bundle. What we're going to do is write temp ID 3. Comma. Enter, quotes, title, colon, val in title, comma, enter, quotes, number, colon, val in number. See what I'm getting at here? I'm going to sort of link together okay there's a title of a comic book it comes from the value of what they input into the title field there's a number 
associated with this particular comic, and it comes from the value of the input field where they typed the number. So obviously I need to do those next fields, comma. Next one here we'll do year, colon val in year. We have the publisher and we have notes. And all of these just should be obvious, but all of these are coming from when we, uh, a little higher up, when we started this function right there. Create variables of those objects which are equal to the value of what was typed into those inputs. So then we have year publisher notes. In these fields, we can call them whatever we want. We're keeping it simple and obvious. Publisher is comes from val in publisher. Hopefully, you're using the little pop-ups that appear to help you type. When a pop-up appears that is relevant, you can just press tab, and it will select it. I would not <coughs> recommend. I would not recommend pressing enter because I've seen that sometimes pressing enter creates an enter on screen instead of selecting what was in the pop-up. So for example here, colon space val, and I can you know move my arrow key, use my arrow keys on the keyboard to move up and down. Notes, tab, not enter, and it adds it. Because I think enter, I've seen it before, and if I see it at least once, I think that's too much. I've seen it that I pressed enter, and it makes an enter instead of entering what I'm selecting from the pop-up. Okay, after that JSON object, console log. Let's see what that looks like when it's all bundled together. Go ahead and save it and run it. Type stuff into those input boxes and press submit. And check your console to see if it shows all the data bundled together. It's not saving to the database yet. You should see all of the data grouped together as one object in your console. So we're making up all of these properties of this object and filling them in with what the person typed. All of these are completely optional. This is our own schema. This is our own infrastructure that we're inventing. This is how we're saving the data to our database that we're inventing. They can be called anything you'd like. Capital letters if you want, multiple words, still in quotes, keeping it very simple. The required one is the underscore ID. You can have anything else, but you need the underscore ID. I'm going to run this in the browser. Remember the keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio is F5 to run it quickly on your browser or device. F12 to open my console. I'm going to save a comic. Do Superman number one, save. So I see the, the feedback that I've seen before. And then depending on um, how, what version of Chrome you have, I guess, it might show it to you something like this. And I see it there. I've got all of those pieces there. And you can open it up, see it like that too. Maybe you can kind of stretch your, your panel around a little bit like that. But I see perhaps you may see something like this. I've noticed that with people, sometimes it doesn't look exactly the same as mine. I, I might have a different version of Chrome than you, 
but you should see something like this. The curly bases and the various properties or fields that you created. And if you open the bundle, it shows it to you again, this time alphabetically. So N N P T Y underscore. So I wrote it first, but it's here alphabetized last. Doesn't matter. There's all my data. I didn't write anything in notes. I didn't write anything in publisher. That's that's exactly what I did, so nothing is there. If I did write something here, DC Comics, I say issue number one, save that. It does see the data, hopefully. And it shows it in there that in the notes property, there's that value. And in the um, publisher property, there's that value. It's all grouped together. And there's something called proto, just ignore that for the moment. There it is so far. Yes? It, it, it is supposed to be unique. Yes. Oh, you mean what happens if you save uh, the famous um, Superboy number yeah. one from 1941? Good point, because let's look at that. If you click Save, Hmm, this ID is exactly the same as that ID. So yes, very true. Every item in pouch must have a unique ID. So uh, you're right about that, and we, ha we have to fix it, of course. Uh, does everyone see that? We, I saved here two different comics, Superman number one, Superboy number one, but they're both, they both have the unique ID of SUP. There's several ways to fix this. Um, Let's look what's going on here. The, the ID, the unique ID, comes from temp ID 3. Temp ID 3 is coming from the first three letters of the comic. OK, well, uh, maybe you know if I do like five letters, SUPB versus SUPM, that might work. I still wouldn't trust that. You never know. There might be a comic book that has an even longer name that is similar to another comic. Okay, well, in the world of comics, there have been Superman number one several times throughout the decades. There have been several Superman, Superboy number one several times throughout the decades. They all have the exact same name, Superman number one. But there's a Superman number one in 1940, one in 1990, one in 2014, one whatever, next year. So if we also use the year in addition to its title, that should be unique then. So let's refine this a little bit right here. Let's take the first three letters of the comic, space plus, make sure you're still inside of the comma, dollar val uh, in uh, number. Let's let's make sure we're really unique because we want to keep track of this particular comic with the first three letters plus the issue number plus the year. So then plus val in year. So even if I have Superman number one and Superboy number one. It's going to be different years. So SUP1 1941 and SUP1 1949, whatever. Um, here now, we should have a much more unique um, ID. And we need a unique ID for every uh, item saved to our database. So see, here we've done concatenation. We're adding things together. We're adding different strings. We're adding the first three letters plus the year, uh, plus the number, plus the year in that order. And that should be more unique. Running it again. One from 1940. Super Boy number one from 1941. 
So now the unique ID SUP11940 versus SUP11941. Uh, so putting together more of this data into one field makes it more unique, but I think conceivably, um, in theory, we could have that Superman and Superboy both had a number one in 1945. That's possible. We would still run into the issue of SUP 11945 for Superboy versus Superman would be the exact same ID. So you see, this is an issue that that you quite maybe don't run into until you really think about it, logically go through it, teta, test it, beta test it, and you, and, you, and you think like a user. As the programmer, as the developer, I, I think I've got it all figured out what I need to do to make my app. But then um, I, I remember hearing the expression like, you know, uh, you can't make anything foolproof because there's so many ingenious fools. So perhaps think like, how can I break it? Uh, how can I make something go wrong, and how can I fix it? Uh, so, maybe I do need four characters as my, uh, as my uh, starting point um, of the letters. But again, I, I might have uh, super boy and superb man. And again, that, that B is there. So. In our case, I think what would be uh, useful is we can create another field that also helps to serve uh, for uniqueness. And as I said, I've taught this before, so I know what's going to happen. Uh, and eventually, we're also going to have, uh, we're going to try to fix it also a second way. And then we're going to have even a third way of redundancy for just in case. There's going to be one more way to make sure this is a completely unique thing. We'll get to that. Here's the second solution. Uh, let's add one more field after notes. So make sure you've got a comma after notes field. After notes property, we'll call this unique ID. You can call this unique capital ID if you want, lowercase, uppercase, whatever you want to call this. I'll put it all lowercase. OK, we're going to start up this unique ID based on val in title. Hmm. That one is the one completely unaltered. That's the one still with the Superman, or a uh, Superman number one. Temp ID 3 is the version of the comic with it being stripped out of the, or a, uh, or an. OK, so we're going to use the complete title. But that's going to have like spaces and other symbols. OK, well, what we're going to do is replace We've used replace before. We had replace up over here. We said replace any instance of an with nothing. Replace any instance of a as the first word with nothing. And replace any instance of the with nothing. So what we're going to do here is replace any instances of non uh, alphanumeric <coughs> characters. Replace any instances of spaces and dashes and stuff. Just leave letters and numbers. And it goes like this. Slash, backslash, S, slash, G, comma. This is a regular expression. This is like very esoteric, hidden knowledge of how to replace or find, actually find characters in a string. Uh, let me come back to that one moment to fully explain it.
comma, space, quotes, nothing in between the quotes. Dot to uppercase, because in title grabs what the person typed into the box is uppercase, lowercase, and such. And uppercase and lowercase matters. So we're just going to force it all uppercase. Uh, that's a method. So we're going to force it all uppercase. We're going to say, whatever they typed, remove special characters. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to tell. That means remove special characters? Yes, I'll explain why in a moment. Remove all special characters, replace them with nothing. Turn it all uppercase. And also uh, keep track of the number of the comic and the year of the comic. Space plus dollar val in number. Space plus dollar val in year. Okay, so here we've got um, a longer unique identifier. That one up there is limited to three letters, the number of the comic plus the year. This one of unique ID, save it and run it and compare it to show you it's a longer unique ID. run that Superman number 1 1940 save the data right here so the unique ID SUP1 1940. The, the underscore ID is SUP11940. The unique ID field Superman11940. If I had the Superman Adventures unique ID is that. It's the whole name of the comic excluding spaces <coughs> and so um, that unique ID there is the full name of the comic um, for further purposes, for further purposes later, we could, in theory, uh, use this huge name as the idea. There's no real limit to the length of this. Any of these fields can be, you know, two thousand characters long or more. We could use the full name here. Uh, but again, putting it with a the, do we want that? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the requirements from you know the development team or the development head says we need to save our IDs in the pattern of three, one, four. So maybe there's a requirement to how the IDs are saved. I'm showing you two possible ways to, to deal with this. We need unique identifiers for all of the comics in the database. Um, so here's two solutions so far. There's going to be a third one that I'll get back to a little later, because this doesn't quite solve if it was the Super Boy Adventures. That's OK for the moment. This is still going to be SUP1 1940, SUP1 1940, although each one is, uh, does have the unique ID in terms of right here, unique ID. It's the full name of the comic. But it has the the which I might not want. Maybe I can use temp ID3. See what I'm getting at. There's a lot of details that as we create our app, we have to have in mind.
Okay, this um, regular expression. Uh, raise your hand if you've heard of regular expressions in computer programming before. Okay, only a few people. So let's take a quick little detour here. If you want to open your web browser, I think the easiest way to do this is uh, just search R E G E X P and just search that. If you do a search for R E G E X P, um, you get lots of results, but I guess we'll, we'll look at this one from Mozilla. Regular expressions, JavaScript from Mozilla Developer Network. Uh, I don't recall if I've mentioned it before, but if I haven't, uh, so Mozilla, they're famous for uh, running the uh, Mozilla uh, Firefox web browser. Uh, an earlier version of Mozilla was also, the Mozilla company was responsible for the classic Netscape Navigator. Remember that web browser, if you were around back then? Netscape Navigator, early web browser. It was the team that eventually became Mozilla. And the team that developed Netscape Navigator also developed uh, JavaScript. So technically, uh, the JavaScript language that we use nowadays came from people that worked in Netscape Navigator, which evolved into Mozilla Firefox. So sort of like the official documentation of JavaScript comes from Mozilla, the Mozilla Foundation. So MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, developer.mozilla.org, is a great resource where you can learn a lot about JavaScript, the latest documentation in JavaScript, uh, the history of it all and such. And here there's an article on regular expressions. We're not going to read it word for word, but regular expressions, it's a constructor creates a regular expression for objects matching text with a pattern. So regular expressions are honestly one of the weirdest things and I, I don't feel I have any, um, I don't have enough um, experience in it to call myself a uh, talented enough to use them at all. These things I think are hard. Um, regular expressions are a way for you to search for values in a string and they're in a way that's so esoteric it's like okay the regular forward slash starts the search and the backward slash W does this and then the plus does that so you have to like you have to know what a, what a forward slash means completely different than any other languages. But this article here, if you want the full details, are listed here. So, let's see examples. Special characters. If you're searching for any, any digits in Arabic numerals, it's a backslash D. Backslash capital D matches any character that is not a digit equivalent to this W. So I'm saying that because in our code here, this is what we're doing. We're saying let's start a regular expression. Let's search for something. The something is here, and then slash G globally right here. Matches a single white space character. So what we're saying here, search for any instances of a white space character globally throughout my whole word, replace it with empty space, or with nothing, actually. Matches any character that is not a word character from the basic Latin alphabet equivalent, backslash capital W, capital S, matches a single character other than white space, equivalent to that. Um, This is kind of a bit of advanced searching within a search and replace method. The point of this is we saw that it took out the it took out the the blank spaces in the name of the comic. That's the short answer. This takes the empty space out of the name of the out of the name of the comic because we should not write comments inside of our JSON data. We will have to write a comment before or after 
the code in, inside of it. Dot replace, you can say something like FYI, replace slash backslash G comma quotes means find any instances of white space and replace with nothing. Find any instances in the title of the comic with a white space and replace with nothing. Okay, this actually might be better now that I look at the documentation again. Um, a moment ago when we were running this, it was uh, removing the white spaces, yes, but it was leaving like special characters. Uh, it looks like I found a better way perhaps. Uh, so see there, this omitted the... What if we have numbers? Okay, that might be good. Okay, so you see here the title is The Space Spider Dash Man 99 Exclamations. Um, the way we have it right now, it would keep the dash and the exclamation points, which might screw things up. So I think looking at the documentation, I think it's going to be better to instead do backslash capital W. I think that's a little better. Backslash s was finding any instances of an empty space. But I think right here this is better. Finding any instances of non-alphanumeric characters and replacing with nothing. sanitizing the data a little bit more. Uh, some of these uh, characters uh, are commands, so I think it'd be better to strip out more of the data, keep it simple. Just simple letters and numbers, no special characters. Um, with more testing, we might say, we might decide. Well, that maybe that's too strict. Maybe for the moment that's fine. We'll see how it goes. But I think backslash capital W. Maybe make a note that that has to be a capital W. Lowercase W does something different. Lowercase matches any alphabetic character from the Latin alphabet, including the underscore. Matches any character that is not a word character from Latin. Okay, yeah. So not a word character. I guess that sounds good. For example, backslash W matches apple. Five, three, and three D matches percent. Okay.
Okay, so after this console will say return temp comic. After bundling the data, return it to global scope. At the moment, temp comic, this variable, was created in a function. It can only be used in the function. If we want to use that variable outside of the function, we can return it to the global scope here. We can then use it elsewhere in the rest of the app. So we'll take our first break in just a moment. But just to confirm, the way it should be working at this point is that you type stuff into all of those fields. All of the data is um, bundled together. And you see the output in the console. Although that separate info is bundled in one object, all of the fields, and there it is so far. It's just about 7. Uh, we'll take our first break. We'll take a break until 7.10, and then we'll go on.